On this week's episode of the Superhero Show Show, we'll find out if Captain Carter can make it out of the year 1602. How many times we'll hear our panelists ask if Strange Supreme is Doctor Strange with sour cream on his head. And if former Superhero Show Show host Greg can still hang with the boys. All of that and more on an all-new episode of the Superhero Show Show! Hello, nerds, and welcome to the Superhero Show Show, the only podcast that covers every live-action TV show based on a comic book, even when those live-action TV shows are drawn. I am your host, Ryan, and I am so happy to be the host tonight, even though it is because of obvious trauma and drama. Um, I'm going to ask Cassie, or I'm going to ask Mike, because you have the down low on what happened to Cassie, Mike. What happened? Oh, yeah, all the drums and drums. You're going to want to... After I tell you this, get on the phone with your mom. Uh, Cassie, I heard three troms and four troms. Yes, she was busy. Uh, she's kind of a, a a car gal. Everybody knows that about it. She was working on a car, uh, which just happened to be a Bigfoot level monster truck, uh-huh. and uh, she pulled an Anton Yelkin, and so it rolled wow. backwards, and she just barely dodged it. But her pinky toe did get crushed, uh, and that's why she's not here. The most important of the toes. Yeah. You can't walk say. or talk without it. <laughs> I just always have so many pinky toes in my mouth. That's why I can't do it. Also here, to help balance this foot out, I would say Pop Filter's very own pinky toe. It's Greg. Hey, uh, Mike, you were referencing that thing that happened with uh, that guy that was on Star Trek and the Jeep. Yeah. That's something that Jeep knew would occasionally happen to their cars. Their cars would go from park to being in drive, but they were like, you know what? It's hardly ever happens. It's not a big deal. And after he died, they were like, okay, we'll fix it. Oh, fine. Oh, one you guys liked died. <laughs> I, as I, I'm not in control. You guys know that some sort of uh, goblin or gremlin is ratatouing me at all times. As I yes. said that name that I haven't thought about in who knows how long, I was like, is this, that was years ago, right? This isn't a too soon scenario. No, definitely not. Yeah, his tragic death is now uh, just up for poking, Hilarious. poking fun yeah, at. Any poking joke. fun at. Uh, full of good taste, that comment, and you in general, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> um, were the, was the board at Jeep like, uh, a celebrity just died, sir? It's like, uh, C-level? No. B-level. Oh, oh let's recall them. Geez, B-level Louise. rising. We're going to have to recall the car. Huh? Is it bad when the, when you have the car in park, but then it will just occasionally jump into drive and just start going? Is that a bad I, thing? That's the fast what, and furious lifestyle, I about think. It. <laughs> One quarter mile at a time. And can I just say that uh, a B-level rising is much better than a C-level rising, which is what's happening to our planet right now. And uh, we need to do something about so, it. Yeah, someone's got to get on that. Someone so, please get that's on that. That's what we're doing. You just get on that? We keep saying, hey, hey, get on that. Yeah, get. I mean, a lot of people are not doing anything, and I'm saying to those people, get on that. Just Ladies get and on gentlemen, that. the listeners, please email tonight, government.gov, and just, just in the, the subject title, line, get, get on, on that. Get on no that. text in the body. Uh, <laughs> no time. If you don't think that email will work, you can also do contact at whitehouse.com. Get on that. <laughs> get on that. Now, Joe, wake up, sleepy Joe. It's time to end climate change once and for all. And of course, is there if there is a comic book based TV show about climate change, you can email contact at popfilter.co and just yeah. say, get on that. Get, get on that. Get on that. Get get on that. We uh have to get going, and it's not because we have so much to do tonight. Uh, it's because we have so little. This is a junior, tiny little version of Superhero Show Show. Because as we've been telling you for the past Months, many months, eight years or so. Um, all three of us, plus uh, our compatriots, McKenna, Caitlin, and Cassie, are all hard at work on the best of the year, 2025. Uh, the we're difference is, <laughs> yeah, let's just get ahead of it for once. The difference is, uh, those episodes are finally out. You should go check out on the movie of the year feed wherever you get your podcasts. Best of the year, it's there. Oh, shit, was this promos right now at the beginning? We're flipping the script. 180. 
Well, I just want to thank everybody for listening. We will see you next week. Goodbye. Enough said. I'm just kidding. Um, but no, we do have a lot to do. So everybody shut the fuck up because it's time to get to the season finale, the two part season finale of the second season of What If. In What If 208, we pick up in 1602, where an even more out of time Captain Carter now serves at the pleasure of Queen Hella when an inexplicable series of rifts rips Hella away. The now King Thor blames Carter, and she takes off, meeting Tony Stark, and then Rogers Hood and his band of merry men. Rogers Hood. Good one, Joe. They have to steal the Time Stone from King Thor and use it to send the Forerunner home. Oh, the Forerunner is someone other than Peggy that doesn't belong in 1602. It turns out to be Steve, or as I call him, Rajez. Because why not? Taste Buds, I ask you this. How many takes on the tragedy of Peggy and Steve can we handle? If people know one thing about me. It's that I'm a cap guy. Sometimes <laughs> that's the only thing people know about me. I, I'm good. <laughs> I don't need this anymore. <laughs> I certainly don't need three versions of it in the same season of What If. There's a part at the end of this episode where Peggy's like, well, I guess we'll never get our happy ending after so many attempts. And I like looked up from my phone and I was like, oh, I guess it has been a lot of attempts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on show. I love the way they kept saying forerunner <laughs> on this episode. They were looking for a forerunner. I just imagine they were going to come around a corner and there was going to be a Toyota forerunner. Toyota. We found it. We got to send this back to our normal time. Just our friend Cassie driving it. Oh, that's where she's been. Is uh, Peggy is the one? Is Peggy the one he decides to end up with at the end of? Uh, yeah, they okay, did get yeah. their happy ending. So they do get it, and we yeah. know that they get it, and they're yeah. But well, they but don't he, know that. They don't know because this is the cap that hit the gemstone in a different way from infinity war oh yeah so he accidentally poked the rock yeah. stone and got sent in a weird place um let's start here um after we've talked about we've now discussed the biggest boldest will they won't they in mcu history although i'm i think this is will Peter they can't they <laughs> <laughs> um but let me just throw this out i uh, i don't think this episode ever made a lick of sense it, it attempted to <laughs> Every second. Yeah. And yet I still loved it because they were, it, it just reminded me of these what if comics where they yeah. were like, uh, here's the different versions. That's all that you care about, right? Yeah. And don't ask how people in the 1600s can shrink. Hey, shut your fucking mouth if you're about to ask that question. We are <laughs> I mean, having fun. Don't Scott ask. Lang had a question about that. They, he was yeah. like, isn't that my thing though? <laughs> like, why can they do it? Also, if you put a bunch of sh- tiny guys into a blunderbuss and then shoot them, are they just okay? No. You shot your enemies with a thousand of your best friends. You exploded. I those think dudes. Greg was just starting one of those episodes of Mythbusters, and now we need to <laughs> go to our warehouse and find out. Let's see if you shrink down <laughs> a tiny dude. Does it does it ever the like now check out this version of this person? Does that ever strain you a little bit as yes. a as a viewer of the show because like they brought in they've got the um what's the favreau guy what's his name happy, happy yeah, Hogan. purple hulk happy yeah, okay Hogan. so they have well, happy that Hogan is a reference too. why is he also the, the you, hulk Greg. hogan because one never even thought about hulk hogan why yes. did nobody call him that um that is a reference to like episode because he'll two sue or you three. hulk hogan will sue you yeah. of, hey brother that's my <laughs> name uh in episode two or three, it's Die Hard, but Happy Hogan was no, yeah, I know. Uh, John McClane. And for inexplicable reasons, uh, he that's when he becomes what they call, never on the script, but only if you do some research, the freak. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the freak! And so this is, ju- this is just a giant snake eating itself even more. It's not just referencing comics or the MCU. It's referencing its own what if. Yes. Occasion of everything. Which, the what if verse. So, yeah, so all of these, at some point, a green portal or baby blue, I don't know. It's if a time rift. Is, uh, opens up and <laughs> these people fell through. And at one point, the happy Hogan from the Die Hard What If universe fell oh, through. Okay. Yeah, it's like that one came through. I didn't right. put that together. I was like, I now expect in Captain America New World Order. Hulk Happy Hogan inexplicably turns into the freak. But I'm also like retcon explaining so I don't rip yes. beard hair out of my face. Like, that's just uh, 
Well, Otherwise, it really is just kick back and enjoy the punches. And what she does uh, is the better way. I think you should enjoy the show. But I think what you said makes sense because when she sends Steve back, uh, Steve, so Steve. wherever he comes from, Ant-Man, everybody the Hulk, disappears. Steve, yes, exactly. And they so, all go back to their normal places. Yeah. And so, like, I do think that a lot of people might think of what if as a um, almost like a Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. This is a story that we just didn't have time to tell. Right. So there yeah. was a night in our uh, MCU, which yeah. is also called the Six One Six. Which what the fuck, guys? No, isn't it nineteen nine 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 nine? That Happy Hogan had a night in that building like that. But no, right. this is a different universe that we've never seen. And the only thing that's different out of everything is this one thing: at least have raining donuts. Just have raining donuts in <laughs> every <laughs> universe except for the MCU. Um. We're going to get to the the final episode in a second, but there was something about this one that I just didn't have time while watching it to ever care about any issues. I really did have a big, stupid grin on my face. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that, with that critique, that criticism is that, does that mean that I can only recommend this to a, a Marvel fan, right? Because that's just not, that's not something that you can say, this was a good episode of TV, or normally here at the Pop Filter family of podcasts, we say, put your phone in another room. Hide your I children, didn't watch hide your this wives. with my phone. It was a joke. Here, fully stare at your phone and have this on. Play Marvel Snap if you need even more Marvelness <laughs> while watching this. Double barrel Marvel. Yeah, I like. I would say it's a prerequisite that you like Marvel because you have to get what like each character is and what the riff is right. on them and then how those riffs play off each other. But one thing I'll tell you for sure is that this is a cartoon for children and there's nothing wrong with that except anytime the show becomes banter, it is banter that would make a 10-year-old laugh and I am slightly... A 10-year-old that hasn't seen the MCU. 10. There are many 10-year-olds who have seen all 28 movies of the MCU and they're over this as well. <laughs> the banter is this is this is lower order banter and not all of the actors who are just actor actors a lot of them and not voice actors right. that is not a, a a skill that necessarily translates if you're Kate Blanchett it translates you yes. get it you can exist well, can in both everything. worlds but some of these like big hollywood actors they don't know what you do as a voice actor well, and that sometimes like i think that expresses itself most they in the banter should have watched Robin Williams in the phenomenal Ooh. film <gasps> Mrs. Doubtfire doing voiceover Ooh. work and just Hello! emulated that. <laughs> <laughs> it was a run by Genie. <laughs> um, the uh, the other thing that they could have done is gone for uh, impersonators. Uh, yeah. Lake Bell is a very famous actress, so I don't know if she counts, but I do think that her Scarlett Johansson is fucking spot on. Um, if and you... is the t- is the Tony Stark guy actually? It's actually Robert Downey Sr. <laughs> <laughs> Who is dead, so they had to break out the steel drum. Because I feel like they like I feel some of them they have recast and some of them yeah, and they still got the it's OGs. sort of it was sort of our way of telling us who's still involved. Yeah. And so uh Scar Joe, Artie, J. Joe, and let's just say Chris Evans. I don't need to keep this. Chris F. Joe? Uh have already been like we're out. Yeah. Chris Hemsworth Leave us alone. did both. Like Chris Hemsworth, there was he was the voice in these two episodes, but not in an earlier Thor episode. Ah, okay. So right. he's he's got one foot in, one foot out. I'm that, back, I guys. I think he said uh if Taika's involved, I will not be involved, which I think is a good <laughs> career choice. Uh but Taika was also in multiple episodes. Hey, hey, hey. I like when Taika Watiti produces things. Dude, I I thought he was I thought his voice acting in this was entertain he was entertaining again. I can't remember last time. Yeah. He I was like <laughs> I'm down with what you're doing. He's had the most practice because Korg shows up in every fucking episode of what Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> what I was going to say is that because they went with these very very big names, then you're not having the time to get them all together, have some direction, give them some right. notes on their performance. You're sending a uh talk boy it's from yeah. Home Alone 2 yeah, the to their house. Pen. You're like, sit in your closet. Yeah, do this real quick and mail it back in. The and weirdest, greasiest, like, recording engineer is going to, like, come into your private space <laughs> and touch your stuff. And you don't need to be taped, <laughs> but he will tape you. <laughs> and you don't need to have all of your dresses touched, but he no, will touch he them. he will touch them. <laughs> and you will see his fingerprints on your clothing? 
Because again, he's Slater. greasy. He's greasy. Was um oh no, I just blanked. Loki. Tom Hiddleston, episode. yes. He was. Okay. And he's still involved as far as we know. But is he the, this, this is him the whole time being like that Shakespeare's this Othello is, is all about Iago? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was I did but I didn't hate yes, that. Bit. that was, this was the bit that worked for me because <laughs> Not only was it full rationalization of how only I can understand the play and it's the villain is the most important character, but every time we cut back to him, they didn't even like arc the bit. No. It, j- it was the same thing. It was the- a different group of people that he was yeah. now saying Who the same thing to. We're Telling always bored, sick of hot them. women. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, okay, that's my thing though, guys. Bored, hot women. <laughs> bored, hot women, dude. Yes. Do it. Man, what is it about hot women that they're always so bored? It's because you're talking to them. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, yeah. oh. Oh, wow. Uh, Speaking of Loki in this episode, and then uh, we'll get to the end. Um, There is a hardcore Back to the Future style to be continued. Luckily, all these episodes dropped on the same day, which I think that's actually a bad idea because one a week of these, going back to what Greg said, is that's enough riffs on Marvel that you need. (laughs) Uh, But um, we, we do launch ourselves directly into the finale when Captain Carter sees... Doctor Strange? Strange Supreme? St- yes. Strange Supreme. He walks in, and right away the viewer's like, is this guy evil? But he's not acting evil. And so you're like, I'm pretty sure I remember this guy being very evil. And then well, it's like, ha ha, I'm evil. <laughs> he he was evil and then had a change of heart with the Guardians of the Multiverse last right. season. So he's and not we'll going to get- have a change of heart back. Back to evil. We'll get to all of that in its own segment that the script in front of us clearly says. Uh, but my moment of the week is definitely Loki and how it was the one bit in the season that <laughs> made me laugh. Mike, do you have a moment of the week? Uh, yeah, I, I guess this is the, the, the bad moment of the week is when they kept being like, oh, happy, you know, you have that heart condition. And it's that he turns into <laughs> canonically the freak, the freak. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, oh, come on. Cause, uh, Rogers is like, uh, fight him to the yeah. death. But don't make him mad. And then he cuts off like his mustache, which right. is what makes him mad. And he's like, oh, fuck. Happy, please, please, please. Like, why? Who gives a shit if well, Happy is a heart mad attack. at Steve Rogers? Well, because he becomes the freak, Ryan. <laughs> and you don't want to see that. My <laughs> wife has a coffee mug that is just all the way around it is insults from Shakespearean plays. Yeah. Which they, clearly they were... bought for Happy Hogan's dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> he just runs through every single one. Uh, Greg, do you have a moment of this episode? It's when he, uh, when Happy loads up a bunch of his soldiers into a gun <laughs> and then fires the gun. It, it works dope. out, but uh, bold move there. It also reminds me of when Eddie Valiant pulls out his cartoon gun and uh-huh. there's like all those Western bullets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, we are going to take a break. And when we come back to be continued, it's going to be us talking about the final episode. <gasps> When we start the season finale, The Watcher, Captain Carter, and Strange Supreme are waxing poetic about how close of friends you are when you become the Timeline Avengers. That closeness leads Carter to believe that new character Kahori is the bad guy. But it takes very little for Kahori to convince Carter that Strange Supreme is the bad guy. Strange is all about this Christine again? Yes, it's all about Christine again. Die! Taste buds, after a rousing adventure in the 15th century, does the season flow nicely into the big third act we all deserve? No, this is... So the whole what if it's what if Colin shut up and play the hits, but in a new way. And this finale even more. Shut up and play the hits harder. Play our new hits. Twist. There was a montage of Captain Carter's adventures in the beginning of this episode. <laughs> but again, they dropped all of this in a day. So a lot of the things they're montaging happened I saw earlier for you ago. that day. <laughs> But they know, I mean, you said it yourself, Mike, this is a show that presumes that you are like looking at your phone, mm. playing Marvel Snap, maybe reading a Marvel comic, maybe playing one of the many Marvel video games out there. So it's like, they know that you're not totally committed to what's going on. So they're going to remind you. I like, this was especially bad for me. I understand what you're saying, Greg, but this was especially bad for me because of how much I really did like the six or had a good time with the 1602 yeah. episode. This one was like, and we've told our story. That's 11 pages of script. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Take the last five page- pages of the script. Control, copy, control, paste. All right, now we're at 16. Okay, hold on. Copy those five pages again two more times and we will hit our runtime. And it didn't even be... 
him being like, hey, yeah, here's my out of time mansion. I have been <laughs> hunting down universe killers. One escaped. Can you help me find them? That that kind of sounds like a fun episode of TV. Yeah. <laughs> Run. It's interesting. But Get they bailed on that so quickly. I like the part where Captain M- or Captain Carter, unle- like as a move, unleashes all the universe killers. Yeah. yeah. That is a sign that even the people in the universe of your show don't take the universe of the show very seriously. Okay. So let me explain real quick. Uh, so... Strange and Carter, who have worked before, worked together before as like the What If Avengers, right? Yeah. Along with Gamora, the Guardians of the Timeline, right? Guardians of the Timeline, along with Gamora. I don't remember why she was different. She was the Gamora from the Gamora episode of this season, where it was all about Tony in a Death Race two thousand on yes. Sakaar. Um, and then uh, Killmonger, and there's a bunch of them. There's a bunch. Um, Doctor Strange or Strange Supreme, who we have now had multiple documentaries about how he is not a good guy has become the like single um uh, uh timeline killer killer and so he's trapped them all he's gone to every timeline and said whoever destroys this i will get them and i will imprison them and not a bunch of due process i'm gonna assume in no, what he does no uh but also he's just going by he like, habeas is that corpus but he does not <laughs> abide by any of those rules he's going by his gut and also even if you could make an argument where we just need to get rid of the uh, universe killers or the timeline killers, it's still for only one reason. I yeah. miss Rachel McAdams so much. Yeah. And we all I, do. We get that, I get right? It. Yeah. Did you guys see that episode of Dave where her and Dave just sit all, down on the ground at the Met Gala charging their phones, flirting? <laughs> it is amazing. <laughs> and this is uh, the Dave. documentary about producer Dave. Yes, exactly. <laughs> he out with Rachel I think he plays a little fast and loose with what actually happens in his life. <laughs> um, so we get there, and uh, it takes about 10 seconds for Kahori. I'm going to say that different every time. Uh, to convince Captain Carter that, no, Strange Supreme is the real bad guy. She's like, look how cool I am. I'm good, obviously. And did you notice that he's got, like, the wings of a bat? And the bags under the eyes of a yeah. bat. Yeah. Like, he looks evil. Yeah. Um, and so they go up against him and into his prison. And like what Greg said, she throws her shield in such a way where it smashes the jail cell of every timeline killer. And she later goes, maybe that was a bad idea. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. But the worst offense, they didn't even play Thin Lizzy's jailbreak. <laughs> that would have kind of rescued her for me. Instead, they only played Thin Lizzy's. The boys are back in town. And what boys? Boys like Evil Thanos and Evil or Killmonger? No, thank you. Evil Thanos is not... You can just say Thanos on that one. I do feel like the last 10 minutes of this last episode... Which, by the way, is this just the season two finale? Because this felt very much like them going like, Goodbye, what if universe? See you later. three has already been made. Season four will have a different showrunner. But the first episode of season three is called What If There Was a Season Three? And it's just the writers <laughs> debating it. It so. it feels a little overburdened already. Like, do you yes. think they're going to just... Because like an additional season of this is going to be like too festooned with all these so different... So maybe this is the end of this yeah. What yeah. If it yes. shit. Yeah. I, I would love... Thinking about that, because it is festooned is a good word. Uh, either season three, What If presents Waha. Do you guys remember Waha comics? And they're even weirder and dumber. It's like Mad Magazine versions. Do you mean What The? Maybe it's What The. Yeah. It's definitely not Waha. Dude, <laughs> I, I much prefer Waha. Waha? <laughs> Waha? <laughs> uh, uh, and I forgot my second thing. <laughs> every single every single issue is just what if Howard the Duck had also been there? Yeah. What if Howard the Duck had also been there when Peter, Peter Parker accidentally kills Gwen Stacy? That's pretty close to what if because they love Howard the Duck because they can get Seth Green. Dude, I, honestly, I am not the world's biggest Seth Green fan, but I thought he did an okay Howard the Duck in this. You're not Seth Green? I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not <laughs> Seth Green's mom. <laughs> but there is a, there's a, a string of actual cuts in this episode where every time it cuts another person is like stepping out of the mist yeah. and it's like oh now it's this guy and by the time it culminates in killmonger stepping out of the mist and he's wearing like all the infinity gems i was like i think i might be done <laughs> i think this might be too many things i can't keep track of all of these things at the same time <laughs> And for it, them to bring in Michael B. Jordan to voice Killmonger and have him have no dialogue. Like, what a rude uh, thing. What, to what do do do? Do? How do you do? have it when he walks day? in and go, hey, aunties? <laughs> right? 
Just at least they actually that. brought in the drop pad for movie of the year to do that. <laughs> That's a classic, right? And there. it's keeping the money, which is not cool. <laughs> I did enjoy uh, uh, when they're in the big climax, like the Cerebro looking room, and there's the uh, they call it the Forge, but the Universal Killer Eater, uh, yeah, yeah. the Forge Runner, the Forge Runner, uh, and then they're just fighting about no they will die then a uh, hundred people fly towards the mall no they won't they, and they did that for so long it did is like was the joke of this whole episode how far can we go like how, how much of, of a little kid smashing their action figures can we also, I, I thought established... that but then hearing you ask that i'm like no there's no way like it was in my head until you said that out loud mike the way you said it is, is perfect though there is a point in this last episode where you're like, I feel like I'm listening to my nephew describe <laughs> the drama behind all his action figures. And then, then she, they are wielding all the, the, all the ancient items of the Marvel universe, <laughs> Thor's hammer, Hela's helm. It's like, stop. It's they, like my first day as a DM. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to go for like that moment in Endgame where Cap grabs Milnor and, yes, yes. but had none of the emotional resonance and just, quadrupled down so it was just like this glowy gobbledygook is even more powerful than your glowy gobbledygook i think we can all agree that the the shot that we wanted to see recreated from endgame it should be recreated in every marvel thing is when all those marvel ladies got together and they all <laughs> yeah. grouped up for whatever reason and stood next to each other women they all they crossed get their arms the job and said, done <laughs> <laughs> they crossed their arms and said ruth conda forever <laughs> Um, there was a point where they were going up and down and up and down, and this is like the seventh time where I think it's Hela looks at Thor and like, what the fuck? You know yeah. what? Just kill us. Like, <laughs> it would be better just to die. Um, but eventually, uh, they start a pissing contest, Carter and Strange, where they just make as many of each other as possible. Right. Uh, and then they take all the weapons and they eventually kill Strange. Uh, the Watcher says... <laughs> Carter gets pissed. Like I knew everyone this does with the happen. Watcher. And <laughs> Carter's like, wait, so you were watching the whole time? But yeah, but I didn't want to do anything. Like, I was eating Taco Bell. And then the season ends with them traipsing through time. Traipsing through <laughs> time. Best traipsing. friends. What if what if season three is I, I forget what the, if I forget what the Marvel event was called, but somebody killed the watcher and stole his eyes. Oh shit. That so was whole, Jason Aaron. That sounds right. Uh and yeah, and they replaced him with Nick Fury. Right. But you could take the eye and put it in your head, and then you could see all the secrets. Which of the is Marvel why they universe. had to take Nick Fury. He's the only one who had, an eye. <laughs> he, had the he had the space. <laughs> so he what if the they do that, and it's like a true detective meets Marvel's what if? Hard. It's so funny the way they they invented the Watcher just as a way to tell all these really big Marvel stories. But then the writers started having be in every story. Someone looking at the Watcher and being like, "You fucking pathetic <laughs> jerk! Why don't you help us?" He's like, "I can't, uh, I look like I was, a thumb." I don't. I'm yeah, just supposed to watch. That's my thing. You fucking suck, man. Did they? He's been screamed at so many times. Yeah, by dude, by like the most people. Did they create the watcher just to cuck bald dude? Just like <laughs> you fucking guys are always in the this side. This is how line. you look. You think you're serious? This is what you look like. <laughs> your giant eyes. Your Funko body. All right, Mike. Uh, moment of the week for the finale. Uh, I said it. It is the the people flying back and forth an absurd amount of times started to make me cackle, which is like a. I don't know, almost like a, a NASA training exercise. Yeah. Like, let's see if you can vomit. Uh, we want you to vomit. Greg, moment of the week. Uh, in the middle of just like these relentless cuts to another person suddenly showing up, one of them is the undead Scarlet Witch with her zombie army. And I have to say, I'm never sad to see any of the Marvel zombie stuff. And the Scarlet Witch as like, the necromancer that just like makes a bunch of zombies is so cool and so yeah. awesome. And zombies are the perfect enemy because you can just smash them or cut them. It doesn't matter. Uh, and that was just, I, I thought a fun and completely like non sequitur moment. They come, they turn around a corner and she's just like, I'm here now. Yeah. And then she gets like four minutes. She and, does uh, a little bit of talking without the accent, a little bit of talking with the accent. That's her thing. And then we move on. Yeah. <laughs> Kahori think- even says, and we've met Kahori once. She was only in her own timeline. Goes, oh, great. It's her. Got a Marvel <laughs> banter. Got a Marvel I banter. think that that was actually a good line where like, it made me feel it, where she was like, oh, fuck. Um, I'm going to pick a uh, good moment of the week for this episode, which is one of the tricks that I love when bad guys play is like, I'm not beating you as harshly as I want to. 
So instead, I'm going to fuck with your mind and put you in a prison of your own happiness, yeah. which <laughs> yeah. is either you're like catatonic and then I can kill you or uh, you're going to break out of that and feel sadder than you've ever felt. <laughs> either way, I win. The best is when the hero is in that catatonic state and the bad guy just draws a dick on their face. <laughs> so you come back and you're like, no, I didn't fall for that. You can't try to... And, but the whole time they don't realize they've got a huge dick that looks like it's coming right at their mouth. <laughs> Not to double up on you, but I do think an actually more powerful thing to do is um, use sunscreen to draw the dick and have the sun burn, burn it into yeah. their face. Right in. I was going to say give them crisscross clothes. Maybe just take off their clothes and put them on backwards. So I know. That's that involves assault, taking off their clothes. Okay, yeah. wait. Yeah, sorry. That's not my policy. Somebody's going to walk in halfway through. And you're going <laughs> to look. know what it looks like. I'm crisscrossing. <laughs> what, really? Because it looks like a weird Japanese porn in here right now. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm doing a crisscrossing. It happens. <laughs> um, That's it for What If Season 2. I think overall successful season. We're going to figure out how successful after this break. But before this, I heard, and I was devastated by this news that the two of you leaving me out have designed your own brand new website That's... mike what is this thing that you and greg are designing well i kind of hinted at it earlier it's called waha dot na is it waha dot nana dot nana sure waha na forever and uh greg what is it you i think you explained it better than me it is the only website that you can go to and input your social security number, and we will let you know that we got it. Yeah. <laughs> so, we'll, we'll email you. We'll call you. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like we got that social security number. Your social security number is your username, and your password is your birthday and your mom's maiden name. And uh, that's all the website does. It takes that information so that you don't have to burden yourself with it any longer. Exactly. We'll, you know what I love we'll about us? Keep that all for If you. we were... If we were to even get somebody's social security number, none of the three of us even know what, what do you to do. do I don't even know. <laughs> okay, guys, we got them. Now, let's look it up in the dictionary about what we're supposed to do. I'm going to do the same thing that I do with my social security card, which is keep it in my wallet, even though it says not to. And it's like, it's... don't laminate. You're like, well, you get all what do I and do weird. With this? Oh, my God. The only cardboard that slowly dissolves. It is eating itself. Like I've got it, I've got it in my house, and it's a little bit smaller every time I look at it. I'm like, oh god, hang in there. Do you know what else is weird? I uh, I had to find my three year old daughter's birth certificate, and I found it. And she it should looked, be in charge of that by now. Don't it you think? looks like it came from the 1840s. Like, what <laughs> oh, kind yeah. of printer do they have? They, they, you know, they they made a bunch of Lipton tea not to drink, and then used the tea bags <laughs> to stain that thing. They burnt the edges. <laughs> Birth edges. It looks like an old time map. They lost a lot of kids' birth certificates to the burning the edges a little too vigorously. Uh, we lost a lot of kids' birth certificates this year. There is a band. Oh, thank God he got to the end of that sentence. <laughs> uh, there's a band who has a song that isn't called Waha. Waha. I think it's better than Ezra. And a who? Waha. Bum bum ba da ba ba da ba ba. Waha. <laughs> okay, I guess that's, it doesn't matter. That's Song Ta by Blah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, before Mike be- becomes Pootie Tank, we're going to move on. Uh, I heard of Norm MacDonald. Norm MacDonald's really back in the news, by the way, if you guys are on social media. Dying How's for he him doing? huge. Yes. No, yeah. His bodily, not great. But like no. a lot of people discovered him. And I saw an SNL bit where... Uh, he said that the number one country or the number one song of the country this week is by Better Than Ezra. Number two, Ezra. Ezra. <laughs> and then he just sits there and stares at the audience. <laughs> this is what you people like, right? <laughs> Jokes. This is the kind of thing you came to see, guys. If you're gonna make waha dot na na, I recommend Cyber Sprout. Their design experts are well versed in digital strategy and elegant design, combining the two masterfully. Working hand in hand with you, Cyber Sprout focuses on collaboration and goal driven design to help make sure your website reaches the right customers. Cybersprout.net. Mike, what was that image comic that sounded like <laughs> Cyber Sprout? Spawn. That, that specific Savage Dragon. Which image <laughs> comic? Uh, Cyber Force? Ele- Elephant Men. That was an image. Um, that was image. Was it? Yeah. Cy- I think it was Cyber Force. It came out like right after the big boom of the six image comics. Probably Cyber And they were Force. all... Elephant Man is such a fun comic. It's like, what if soldiers were all these t- cool different types of animals? <laughs> and what if they all had really bad PTSD? <laughs> yeah, and B.O. Do you know what it looks like? Or what it reads like is if uh, 
There was a whole comic book of far side panels. Yeah. It's just <laughs> living with. It's humans. like if the Ninja Turtles was about how they committed war crimes against each other. And then had to deal with that mentally. <laughs> uh, so please check out cybersprout.net for issues of Elephant Men. When we come back, let's rank these shits. The nature of anthology shows or skit shows or anything where stuff is a little bit different, uh, you have to rank them because some of them, by definition, are going to be stupid. So let's do that now. Here's the way it's going to work. Uh, I took IMDb's ranking, which is always great at um, saying that episodes of anything with boys in it are good and girls are bad. Uh, we're going to go <laughs> boys, from boys, boys, we're boys. Gonna go from the bottom up. Mike, I'm going to give you two episodes, and you're going to tell me if that's in the correct order. Okay. Right? Number nine, the worst episode, is What If Happy Hogan Saved Christmas? The- Number eight. Okay. What If Nebula Joined the Nova Corps? Are we correct so far? Yeah, I don't hate that list. All right, Greg. Now you can move anything you want. Your number seven episode is What If Iron Man Crashed Into the Grandmaster? Hmm. Well, so far, I don't have any problem with how it's listed. I I really like that Grandmaster one. Um, That was like Thor um, Ragnarok is like one of the best movies. It's so funny. So I'm going to go with leaving that in the way the, where it is. I thought Happy Hogan Die Hard was far superior to these two, but well, I'm, no, I'm confused. So the, these are the we're starting from the bottom, and now we're here. So these are the worst. Yeah. These yeah. are the worst. So right ones. now, I've got Happy Hogan as the worst. Yeah, I just like the the premise was there. It just didn't. It just it didn't land for me, and I think it's because the humor of this is for is for it's for kids, which is fine. But I would, um, I would flip Nebula and Hogan. No, but Nebula is the one that is. Uh, like the- it's about to be your turn, Mike. You can make any uh, move you want. I'm gonna uh, nine eight. But seven, you could have done that already. So now you look like an idiot. Six. I was still wrapping my head around the pretty plainly stated thing Ryan said. Oh, uh, I've explained <laughs> it to you all week for months. So uh, you guys should know it by now. Uh, nine eight seven six. The sixth best episode is what if Captain Carter fought the, fought the Hydra Stomper, which actually took me a while to remember what happened. I remember Carter and Natasha being bros. Yeah. yeah. I always remember Lake Bell as a cartoon hanging out with a different female cartoon character. That's kind of my jam. That's what Lake Bell does. That's what Lake Bell does. But uh, yeah, Mike, make any one move you want. With these four, I will switch Nebula and Happy Hogan. Blade Runner is now in last place. Greg, I'm going to introduce to you what if Peter Quill attacked Earth's mightiest heroes who, despite being in the 80s, sounded like they were... 200 years old. I'm looking at you, Michael Douglas. I think what if Captain Carter fought the Hydra Stomper? That was the most boring one to me, so I want to move that to the last position. And I th- I'm i a little surprised that Peter Quill is this low. I thought that episode rocked. Oh, it's not going to stay low, my friend. I know it's not my turn yet. <laughs> All right, Mike. Uh, number four is what if Strange Supreme intervened? These people aren't watching television shows. That That is the last episode we just covered. The yes. action figures, the my glow versus your yeah. glow. No, no, no. You can, you know what? Drop that right under, ahead of. That, it's the worst show. Make that the worst episode. All right. That is now in last place. Greg. Okay. According to IMDb, in the top three, the third place is, what if Kahori shaped the world? I really liked the character of Kahori. Um, and th- it was an interesting choice to have this episode be like completely in their language, but I thought that was a very tough thing for the actors. Yeah. And I felt like some of the performances in that were like the worst performances I feel like I've maybe ever heard. So I'm, but I really liked Kahori. I really liked the whole aesthetic of her like lighting up blue and the mm. way like her face paint lights up, but then also like she has these stars on her garment that also light up blue. Also, oh, I'm just now introduced to the sport slash need to survive of dinosaur gem hunting. Yeah, I'll fucking rewrite how that's done. Even though you all have gem powers already and I don't, still better. I'm going to, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that one though. I am going to drop it down a little bit and I'm going to put it above the Happy Hogan Saved Christmas. Okay. So right now it's still in the top three, but now I am adding, what if Hella, Mike, found the 10 rings? 
I which l- is not what happens in that at all. No, yeah. They, what if Hella landed directly next to the Ten Rings? They and was there with them, but the, someone else was wielding them. I kind of remember this about the comics of like, look, we just didn't know what to call it. It would have been a paragraph. Yeah, right. What if these no, but things happen? What they're doing is SEO. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. SEO for a title SEO is much better. Titling. Um, I, but it, this is the episode that had Kate fucking yeah, Blanchett. It had Kate fucking Blanchett. Um, I'm gonna. And she was really good. Very funny. Yeah, and I did like it better than the Grandmaster episode. So, uh, right behind the Peter Quill, I guess. I mean, you can leave it there. No, you don't have to do anything with it. That is guy. not what I feel, though. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you can feel how Greg and I feel. <laughs> it's easy. Uh, and then, what if the Avengers assembled in 1602 is the number one show? Uh, Greg, I'm going to give you guys both one more move after Greg. So, is that the number one, or is there something in the middle that you want to drop or raise? Um, is it's to me you're saying, Ryan? Yes. So, is it Greg, Mike, Greg? Is that what's happening? It is. Gotcha. I am going to say that I think I want to move up. I definitely want to move this down. So instead, I'm going to grab What If the Avengers Assembled in 1602, and I'm going to move that in between Kahori and Iron Man crash into the Grandmaster. And listeners, I'm going to go over this later. Yeah. So just sort of... What? The, they're all staring at the document was staring at, right? <laughs> all right, great. Or right, Mike, you got one more move. My last move is let's take What If Iron Man Crashed into the Grandmaster, uh, Gamora's episode, and let's drop that Right. Yeah, I guess uh, uh, after Kahori, in between Happy Hogan and Kahori. Couldn't agree more, man. This one left me dry. Yeah. Whistling Dixie through my badge. Even all the stuff with the, the Game Master, whatever he's called? Grandmaster, yeah. Jeff Goldblum doing a full on impression of Jeff Goldblum yeah. doing an impression <laughs> of Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> At one point, he said, Life finds a way. <laughs> All right, Greg, you have one more. So you could undo it. Mike did, or you can do whatever you want. I think, Can I just let it ride? I mean, well, okay, hold on. I, I want to move the Novacore one above the Happy Hogan one. All right, and here you go. And I'm not going to bring in season one, right? No, that was come on. I don't remember. Too much. Long ago. Too much. Don't make the same mistake the show made. Uh, <laughs> The best episode of the season, and I actually don't have any problems with this, is what if Peter Quill attacked Earth's Mightiest Heroes? Just, like, kind of focused and also doing the whole 1602 thing of, oh, look at that guy. Look yeah. at that guy. Oh, my God. Uh, we have the Blue Marvel in this episode. Yeah. A guy who is just does not have enough representation. Uh, number two is Hella found the Ten Rings. Is this only because of Kate Blanchett? Yeah, or? it's a Blanchett bump. But I also like her. her but and, also, it's nice to see that universe again. Yeah, her and the guy bouncing off of each other, uh, don't call him the Mandarin, was great. I like <laughs> Wenwu. Wenwu, yeah. Uh, I like when they figure out that we only have 30 minutes. We have to arc the character. That means that we're going to like do some severe things. But like Hella in that white costume at the end, I thought was dope. Uh, our number three episode of the year, 1602. That's just dumb fun. Dumb fun. Uh, number four is Kahori Reshape the World. Um, are we thinking that we'll see a live action? Debra yeah. I, am, so, I don't oh, think they're going to. Oh, she already gonna... has an MCU character. Because she's an Echo. Echo's cousin. I, but I think they need to do more with Kahori. Aesthetically, yeah. very, very pleasing. I was sometimes confused as to what her powers are. It seemed like she has all, all of them. them. But that's cool. Whatever. Um, cast whoever you want as Kahori and give uh, Debra Jacobs the writing directing spot of that movie. That's where she wants to be. Do you ever feel like new Marvel characters are like new Magic the Gathering cards? All the new ones are so much more powerful yeah. Yeah. than the well, old yeah. ones. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you have to do. Is you have to be like, I mean, do you remember? Uh, Here's a new Spider Man. He has 18 additional powers. Sit down. We're going to go through them. <laughs> What's her name from Game of Thrones that was in? Um, Cersei Lannister. No. Uh, Brain of Tarth. Uh, she, she became Super Scroll, essentially. Or oh, she Amelia Dukakis. Dukakis. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Dukakis move. Yeah. Um, <laughs> At the end of Secret Invasion, yeah. that's the name of the show that I completely Amelia deleted Clark? from my yes, brain. Yes, Amelia yeah, Clark. Amelia Clark. Um, <laughs> she was the most powerful person. She had all of the powers in the world. Another little kid inventing a hero. Yeah, and so Captain Marvel, whose kind of only thing was I'm the Superman of Marvel, yeah. she's now Ain't taking shit. away. Okay. Uh, after Corey, we have What If Iron Man Crashed into the Grandmaster? 
number four, what if Nebula joined the Nova Corps, which Mike, me, you, and Caitlin sort of shit on, yeah. but Greg, the Blade Runner aesthetic. This is another one that is like, okay, this should be what if Nebula Blade Runner. Yeah. <laughs> like, that, if you're worried about SEO. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because the premise to get them there is so flimsy, yes. but I just thought aesthetically, and it is made Visually in the awesome. style. And it, it's totally made in the style of the two Blade Runner yeah. movies. Like it's done very, like the shots are very epic, and they they've it's got that slowness mm-hmm. that both the Blade Runners have, and I really appreciated that. So aesthetically, I just thought it was very pleasing. Uh, your third to the bottom, or uh, nine eight seven six five four two zero oh, one uh, is what if Happy Hogan saved Christmas? Uh, thing that I really liked because I I I think I revere Die Hard like Greg reveres Blade Do you? Runner and. But unfortunately, Kat Dennings in the show is like, oh, is this like that movie, that one movie with Bruce Willis <laughs> yes. from okay, 1988? That was, the big, that was the big crime of that. They're like, they won't. And again, it's because it's made for kids. Right. And so it's to help kids understand what's going right. on. But the Blade but, Runner episode, never, Nebula was never like, Blade Runner. A- Animaniacs Blade used to do it all the time and didn't explain shit to kids. Yeah, dude. This is Peter Lorre. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. Man. My favorite cartoon They got character. this guy's number. <laughs> Animaniacs would step up and say, no, I will not finger Prince, the artist formerly known as Prince, <laughs> <laughs> but never explain why you wouldn't. I, guys, at that if age, he's I asking. <laughs> <laughs> Your eighth best show of the season was what if Captain Carter fought the Hydra Stomper? This one dropped the most yeah. in our list from all nine episodes. You know what? I think uh, it was one of the times where it was like the will they want the energy, which is just totally soured. Right. You know, like she's fighting his corpse in a big robot and they're still talking about that. And it's like, come on, come on. Not to be a perv, but will they, won't they Peggy, Natasha? Like that's, that's where the chemistry yeah. is. And why would that be pervy? Because uh, anytime a, a dude sees two girls on the screen, like, I, no, I hope they that's late nineties, early two thousands. You're a pervert. Now you're woke and you're progressive. I'm shipping. Yeah. You're I'm just shipping. Here. I'm just shipping. And I lied. The biggest drop is clearly in last place. We went from second place to last Damn. place. What if Strange Supreme intervened? Something that I'm not sure could technically be called AT, uh, an episode of yeah, television. Yeah, in the same way that we always say about the movies, they got, they have a tendency to not feel like movies. This was like, it, it reminded me of that um, that show, Too Many Cooks, uh-huh. where it's like just the opening credits, <laughs> but they last for like nine minutes and it's increasingly weird. That's the energy. I this love had. too many cooks. Give that writer an episode of What If and see what happens. <laughs> what happened to that person? Killed himself, probably. That shit was crazy. It was too good. Yeah. He it was was it Anton Yelton? <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe they're making around. a series just like uh Scavenger's Reign. That was an eight minute short on Adult Swim Once Upon a Time too. Is that true? Yeah. I wish we were talking about All Scavenger's right. Reign this whole fucking time. You have to wait, Mike. You have to wait to talk about Scavenger's Reign. Those shows are coming up. And for that, like, I don't, like, the, the TV genre thing is so busted. For that to be on TV drama and not comedy, that show's fucking hilarious. That is so uh, funny. Oh, this puffball touched me. Now I'm covered no, in a rash. The pitch the is clearly, what if Rick and Morty was just as gross but never funny? <laughs> <laughs> um, that is our show. That is our rankings of what if. That is our what if coverage. Uh, we have no more what ifs to watch. And that means, guys... We have nothing more to watch. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Before we do, Mike, uh, can you tell these lovely listeners about some <laughs> webby sites? Uh, my f- Waha da uh uh-huh, yeah. of course. <laughs> of course, yeah. obviously. Waha da uh-huh. uh, And then cybersprout.net, uh, if you want to learn how Waha da uh uh-huh came to be um, and make your own. <laughs> then there's popfilter.co. Everything we make goes there, so check that out. Uh popfilter.co slash Amazon. That's how you shop now. Bookmark it. Live it, love it, learn it. Those are our websites. Love it, love it, learn it. Live it, love it, love it, love it. Uh-huh. Lo- live it, love it, love your liver. Uh, all amazing websites. Each one equal to the former. Greg, is there another podcast in the Pop Filter Network you want to talk about? For instance, Movie of the Year, That's Ryan. the one. That's the one. Movie of the Year is our other podcast where we pick a year and we watch the important movies and a lot like we did with the episodes of what if we rank them and we try to decide what is the best what is the ultimate movie of any given year and so far we have been right every time yeah scientists told Mm -hmm, us mm -hmm, mm -hmm. mike uh social media we're the kings of and explain where you can find those kings we are the kings of social media and the kings of our hometown (laughs) at 
your pop filter on Instagram. End of list. And then, <laughs> and then Greg. Yes. Is that all the? I believe that's all the promos. No. Ryan, but wait, no. If you how wanna... do you get in touch with us? And this one is a hard one that people on the show regularly always mess okay, up. Okay, you could email contact. At popfilter.co. Son of a bitch. He did it. Son of a bitch. He looked like he was going to sneeze it. the whole time, but he did it. He, I was like, yeah, I had to bear down. I have to like create some like head pressure to make my brain think good. And so I kind of squint, and that increases the pressure in my head, and then my brain thinks a little bit better. And here's a chamois for your nosebleed, because that, <laughs> yeah, that, that is that out was, of control. That's really going. <laughs> that's a gusher. That is a gusher. <laughs> did mom pack lunch today? Because that's a gusher. <laughs> here's a squeeze it. Uh, that's just another... That's another Old thing school lunch, lunch reference. <laughs> Mike, do you have one? Do you want to say Dunkaroos? Lunchables. <laughs> Ecto cooler. <laughs> uh, I love a good Ecto cooler, f- cooler flavored Lunchable where <laughs> all the meat, cheese, and crackers taste like Ecto cooler. That is our show. Next week, guys, I don't know if it's because of the strike. I don't know if because people have finally stopped No more superheroes. <laughs> about Did Wanda get to this? They've got, they've got Scarlet Witch <laughs> on it. Just no more heroes. <laughs> You can't keep doing this to us. Uh, that's not what the Hollywood CEOs are saying, but it is what the audience is constantly saying. We have no choice but to dedicate an entire episode to the 1990s TV show, Spider-Man, the animated series, yes. and specifically the episode Day of the Chameleon, which is based on Spider-Man number one, the amazing Spider-Man number one from 1963. Wow. His first villain. That is his first The villain. chameleon. As the most iconic. Makes sense to me. Yeah. I'm blending in. <laughs> You think that funny? Four. <laughs> you can only <laughs> kind can of see, see me. Right there. No, you can only kind of see me. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck, he's right. He talked me into it. Uh, for Mike and Greg, uh, and the dilapidated footed Cassie, and of course for Caitlin. My name is Ryan. Thank you so much for listening. Um, what do we say? At the Enough end? said. Hello, nerds. <laughs>